clearly one day on which President Trump's pledge to hold a working vacation was upheld. A lunchtime meeting with his vice president and afterwards a ratcheting up of his hardline position on North Korea. They've been doing this to our country for a long time, for many years. And it's about time that somebody stuck up for the people of this country and for the people of other countries. So uh, if anything, maybe that statement wasn't tough enough. Then what was described as a strategy meeting with former General John Kelly, the chief of staff and national security advisor, H.R. McMaster. This followed by an off-the-cuff media briefing and once again harsh words of warning to North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Let's see what he does with Guam. He does something in Guam, it will be an event the likes of which nobody's seen before, what will happen in North Korea. And considered support from the Secretary of Defense, James Mattis, who's insisting that diplomatic efforts to resolve the situation are ongoing. My portfolio, my mission, my responsibility is to have military options should they be needed. However, right now, Secretary Tillerson, Ambassador Haley, you can see the American effort is diplomatically led. It has diplomatic traction. It is gaining diplomatic results. The offices of Congress are largely empty with members on summer recess. But some 60 members have signed a letter sent to the Secretary of State expressing concern over what are called irresponsible and reckless statements made by President Trump. And also in the letter to Rex Tillerson here on a recent visit to Guam, the demand that the Trump administration acknowledge a constitutional duty to seek congressional approval for any preemptive strike against North Korea a duty to which no reference has been made by the U.S. president on this or any other recent day. Mike Hanna, Al Jazeera, Washington.